about your instructor. Shihan Mikio Nishiuchi is the highest degreed and leading instructor in this country under the Zen Okinawan Kabuto Remne, which is the All Okinawan Kabuto Ancient Weapons Association. This organization specializes in Okinawan traditional weaponry, where many practitioners from many different styles of martial arts gather to learn weapons from qualified Kabuto specialists. The All Okinawan Ancient Weapons Association has its own ranking system as an art unto itself. The head of this organization is Kaicho Shimpo Mariyoshi, 10th degree black belt in Kabuto, who is the son of the founder and lives in Naha, Okinawa. This is the largest organization of Okinawan weapons worldwide, a highly respected organization in Okinawa, known among the Okinawans for its authentic, practical techniques and high teaching standards. Shihan Nishiuchi learned directly from and practiced under Kaicho Mariyoshi and Kancho Takeshi Kinjo in Naha, Okinawa. Shihan Nishiyoshi is also the head instructor of Konan Yu Karate Do in the United States and holds the title of Kyoshi, 7th Dan. Shihan Nishiyoshi started karate when he was 13 years old in Kochi City, Japan, where he was born and lived for 31 years. He went to Okinawa to study karate and kubuto because he knew that this is where both these arts originated. Kochi City, Japan, where he was born and studied, is the mecca of Iaido, and he holds a third dan in Iaido by the All Japan Kindle Federation and holds a certified yeah. Chuden degree by the 19th successor, yeah. Sawada yeah. Sensei yeah. of Ishin Ru. Shihan Nishiyuchi has dedicated his whole life to the martial arts. Now this tape for Nunchaku, most of you knows already what Nunchaku about. But some area in Okinawa has different names. Nunchaku is the most popular name to call this particular weapon. But some area called Nuchiku or Nunchiku. The same thing we are talking about, Nunchaku. Nun means identical. Chaku means there's a bamboo, one section. This is called chaku. So identical two section. So formal name is nunchaku kon is a full name. But most of the people call nunchaku for short. I'd like to explain to you some origin where nunchaku came from about five different theories. The first is, if you're a background of farmer or a horse lover, this is hetmore. Hetmore is usually they use rope, but Okinawa in some area, they use this go over horse's nose to control and maneuver horses. And there's a two holes here. This go, another rope go over nose. That's how you control. Particular rope here, they call shiro. Shiro means a hemp tree rope. Hemp tree. It's actually bark of the tree. And that's very strong. Okinawa people use in many, many different purposes. It's called Hekmo. And some people believe Nunchaku came from this idea from Hekmo horse. Another one is this bamboo, just a two section bamboo tied together with hemp rope. This is to harvest, after harvest, rice. But still, rice is on the rice straw. So push rice straw and squeeze and pull to take away rice part from straw, separation. This very similar to nunchaku, almost same as we use nunchaku nowadays. Another one is bigger bamboo cut in half, so we have more sharper end. Okinawa people use many bark of the trees, kuba trees. They use 
I use belt instead, but between and shave bark of the tree to make clothes of clothes and make more smooth. That's the reason it's a very sharp and sometimes go to trees and pick up and and squeeze and peel bark of the trees. And this is a very similar to nunchaku shape. Some people believe nunchaku came from this particular tools Tama used to use. Another one is, this is called sunset storm, as you know. Sunset storm is a three-sectional set. But if you call three-sectional nunchaku, this is not right word. Nunchaku all the time means two pieces, identical pieces. Some people believe influence from China because geographically Okinawa and China close. So when using this, one end broke off. So only two pieces left. And that, that's where Nunchaku came from. Another idea is this. And this call Kurumambo. Kuruma means a wheel. Bo is a stick or staff. Looks like a wheel, how to use. Mainland Japan, very similar tools was used. Mainland Japan, they hold longer end, but Okinawan people use a grab shorter end. And how they use is to separate beans special soybeans from shells. If you use shells by hand, if you use so many hours, start breathing from nail. And after dried, soybeans are very hard to separate. So they use this kind of particular weapons called, not actually weapons, farming tools called kurumambo. I'd like to demonstrate. We don't have beans here. But this is the probably they use to use. And a lot of power. This way, small movement bring a lot of power. Now some people think they hit grains, but grains are very sensitive. And if you hit that power, that's break off to pieces. So more likely beans, the krumambo. Now I like to explain how to choose right kind of tool. This tool we call nunchaku. I brought bad example and a good example. Now first of all, how to choose the right legs for you on the wood part is hold very close to the string like this, and make sure you have about elbow length. And also, string, how long is very important. How important is, and later on in this film, I'm going to show you how to apply using this part. This part is never wider than your own palm. So measure this way. And this coming down too much, for example, I have uh, here, coming down too much. And when you squeeze it, if you don't feel any pain sp squeezing this much, then it's not right legs for you. Now, soon explain to you how, how long it should be. Let me explain more detail about wood. Now, grain. Any kind of 
wood product, you have to check grain. If your grains run to side to side or angle, it's very easy to break. Even during practicing kata, a special cross to string part. This is a couple, three holes here. It's very easy to break. So when you buy nunchaku, pay attention, such as this, run a little bit angled. Try to avoid, and also shape. Most of nunchaku available nowadays is round or octagon. This is a very good choice. Now, type of wood is hard wood is recommended. Most of wood uh, nunchak available nowadays is used oak. Oak is a very good choice. Now, finish is also important. This is painted or stained. But originally, it wasn't this color. If you painted, as any of the other wood product tools in Okinawa shouldn't paint it because after you during practice the sweat will not absorb to the wood by going back to you as a result you might lose it. You might lose it. Now strings uh, three strings are recommended. Three strings means it's not not tight any of them inside. So more use, it's more tightened. But if you have two strings or four strings, most of the time somewhere between inside, it's tightened. If you tighten it, then comes lo loose. And more loose uh, than loose weapons. So those two strings are not recommended. Now, this is very hard. Well, this is a very good choice. And nowadays, telescopic nunchaku is also available. This is a collapsible. This is very easy to carry. Now, I'd like to show you how long all together supposed to be. Oh, normally, leave a little bit of space in the end of the nunchaku. Don't never cover. And stand up and hold to the side. And nunchaku is dragging, then it's too long for you. Such as this nunchaku for me is too long. According to your size, you have to choose the right kind of length. That is very important. Now, name of the parts. This is a part you strike to the opponent or a block we call monochi. And this butt call conte. 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 This is how to choose right kind of weapons and name of parts. Before Shiha Nishiyushi shows you a jundo, I like to first show you a couple of different stretching games and exercises. The first we have a stretch game. We're going to hold the nunchaka as Shiha instructed you earlier. Hold it close to the bottom of the handle. Hold both ends the same way and hold them in front of you. First step is stepping through. Then pull the nunchaka up over your head. And from here we're going to take the right arm Go around the left elbow, up and behind their head to the back. Then taking the left hand, pulling it out from the back over our right elbow. Now we're going to reverse the process. 
Take the left hand, go up and around, over the right elbow. Then take the right hand, pull it out from the behind, over your left elbow. When you get to here, we have to go back up, over, stepping back through. And then you've completed one set. One more time. Stepping through, pulling both hands up, over, across the front of you. Taking the right hand around your head and your left elbow to the back. Take the left hand back to the front around your right elbow. Then reverse the direction. Left hand around your right elbow and over your head. Take the right hand from behind to the front over your left elbow. From here, going back up over your head, stepping through, and that's one set. Next, some push-ups. The first push-up we call Nunchaka Basic Push-up. Holding them outstretched, putting your feet as wide as your shoulders, and lowering your whole body down at the same time. If you touch on the ground, that's not right. So try to lower the whole body together, coming close, and then back up. The next push-up is called Reverse Basic. We're going to grab it on the other side, palms up. Next push up, it's a triangle push up. For this push up, we try to take our head and bring it down right in the middle of the triangle. The next push-up is a sideways push-up, holding the nunchuck on the side of your body, trying to keep it running parallel with your body, instead of an outward angle or inward angle, try to keep it parallel at all times. And of course, the same thing on the other side. A more push-up is coming up. My assistant Brian showed you called triangle. And he did this way. Very well. Now try reverse. Reversing is hand go this way. It's a little bit harder and the face still go under this way. I'll show you a few. Now next we call tori e push up. Tori means if you go to the Oriental, many shrine, shrine in a gate. This is called tori, looks like a gate. So head go under if you could. Like this. <clears throat> and next, if you can do, this is a challenging for everybody. Tori, go. Reverse. Reversing Tori. Now, last of push-ups, holding very close to string. And since when I explained to you, one of origin is 
comes from Heckmore, of course. So we name this Heckmore push up. So when you push down the nose, here you go this way. Now try not to elbow touch to the floor. This is the most challenging push up. This. 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 And those push ups are very important because any weapons you are doing using extra power and quite different than no weapons where you have even simple weapons. Now going on to next for setups for stomach exercise. Now it's time for some nunchaka sit-ups. The first sit-up, we're going to put our legs straight, feet apart, approximately as wide as your shoulders, and hold the nunchaka out straight in front of you, taut, tight, and stretched out. As you go down, try to keep your hands approximately the same height from your body the whole time. Don't let them go real high and then real low. Always try to keep about the same height. When you come up, go all the way over, and then back down. Then a variation is a thrusting motion. That's a strike with the end of the nunchaka. So we're going to go down, come up, strike. Down, other side, strike. Also, a little bit harder is to put the nunchaka behind your head, but don't let the nunchaka or the strings touch your neck or the ground. Try to keep a space between both. Between down, then back up. And a different variation will be knee bent sit ups. This time we're going to put the nunchaka behind our head and you can touch or at least straight behind without touching. So going down, coming up. Also, pulling the knees to your chest and putting them over and under the nunchaka each time. Now we're going to move on to some leg exercises. The first one, we're going to hold the nunchaka straight out and we're going to jump over and then back without letting the nunchaka hit the ground. So we're going all the way over and then going back. Preferably when you do this, try to do it without pausing in the middle, going over and back. Then maybe after a little bit of practice, you can do it a couple times without stopping. Over, back, over, back. Next, Shiha Nishuchi would like to demonstrate a more advanced leg exercise. A leg exercise continued. Hold ball right, not ball, nunchaku right, and one leg stretch. If you have ball tape, you know very similar exercise, or same kind of exercise is appeared. This is a hip joint. So move one hip to the other legs without lifting up the hip. This is a bad example. And don't bend to start with. Leg go straight and try to reach as much as you can. Push legs and hip stay same level as possible. And going back. That could be one count if you don't have enough space. If you have enough space, go. One, two, and so on, and going back. Make sure all the time go reverse. Keep body straight, never bend. This is no good. Body straight, hip level. 
can go back on the fourth, if you like. Now, if you warm up well, we keep going on nunchaku techniques. Make sure when you practice not only nunchaku but nunchaku special, you have to be air, you have to be clear. clear. Either don't practice in the living room, even in practice back yard, but make sure you don't have any trees or kids around. And first of all, check nunchaku is safe enough to practice or not. Make sure any sprinkles or cracks, that is very important. And if you hit lightly, go by sound. If you crack or not, special, this part is easy to crack. Make sure. Nunchak power come from like a two rocket. The first rocket is hip rotation. So you have to do hip a lot. The second is arm. If you have a tunkwa or tongkwa takes, tongkwa come from three powers, but nunchaku is two, hip and arm. Nunchaku, you don't use wrist. Wrist has to be locked. And special, nunchaku, you have to hold right. How to hold right is power, finger power. Little finger has to be 10 power. Ten power means uh, as hard as you can. And next ring finger is 80%. Middle finger is 60%. And 20-20. We call 10-8-6-2-2. Any weapons hold this way. Now first, Sanchin san stance we have to explain. Sanchin stance means most of the nunchak techniques we use this stance. Sanchin techniques. Start with heel together. Measure one foot apart. Yeah, this is called natural stance. Natural stance. Step, one step forward. And push heels outside to 30 degrees. Distribute weight 50-50. Bend your knees so you can protect your groin area. Those knees is lined up straight up and down with your toe. This is called Sanchin stance. So if you get ready, we are practice. Now when you swing, don't swing too short. Try to reach, reach to the target. Reach to the target and use hip. This is not using hip. Don't bring enough power. So try to use hip as much as you can. Now go to next step. Now this point, we like to explain striking point using nunchaku technique. First of all, I'm going to tempo. Tempo. Now going to jog. Jog, straight this way. Now oh, going to kote. Kote go to forearm. Now go to middle section. 
Middle section hit this way. I'll go to knee. Knee. Go to groin section. This is a striking point. Now go to jabbing. First, jinchu. Second, danchu. Groin. All the time, groin is very good part. Now, nunchaku is not only Swinging or stabbing, we also have eye smashing techniques. Coming eye smash. How it goes straight to eyes. Smash eyes. Of course. Nunchaku, if you have nunchaku and the opponent don't have it, opponent is not going to attack you or kick you. So in nunchaku techniques, no kicking blocking techniques or punching blocking techniques. Any weapons techniques develop against more superior weapons. Opponent has superior weapons. Superior means longer weapons, more powerful weapons. In all times, they kept inside of kimono or inside of a belt. So nobody couldn't see from outside. So sometimes, pinching techniques. Of course, if I show nunchaku, he's not going to come and grab my collars. But if he doesn't know what I have, that time, use some pinching techniques. You saw beginning of this tape. Now, it's time to learn how to do it. The first, my assistant Brian is going to grab single hand on my collar. You pull nunchaku back or front, either way where you have. Bring all the way swing, catch the other hand, Apply, squeeze. This is a single-handed. Anywhere you could uh, keep nunchaku. I'm going to show again. Go very slow, either hand. Pull, nunchaku. Go all the way around. This more effective close to wrist and twist. And as Brian did, if it's painful, skill signal, then you should quit. But you should start pinching until partner is going to give a signal. If he start able, if he start kicking, you can, or you can pull this way. Complete, you can control. Now, if opponent comes and hold two hands, the techniques I just show you might not work because difficult to catch. And after you catch, even you're able to catch, difficult to squeeze. So we use different kind of techniques. After you pull nunchaku, Keep all, both hands open and bring down and squeeze, squeeze. He's not going to be able to do that. And it's easy to crack your opponent or partner's wrist bone. You have to be very careful. And this time he's not going to be able to give signals. So he has to say something before I start. Hey again. Thank you. 
Fint. Now, very similar techniques is somebody holding my hand. Hold. This time, catch string part and bring this inside of you. And sliding and start pinch. Again. Poke, go all the way around, under, catch it, bring this inside, and the sliding hand, and pinching. Very similar techniques, even he grabbed my shoulder. Same technique, po nunchaku, go all the way around, catch, and bring to risk and squeeze. Now, before I actually use nunchaku techniques, you have to know a few different stances. The first one is sanchin. Already sanchin is explained in this tape earlier. But very quickly, I'm going to review. Heel together, toe together. Maybe I will explain to you a different way, but you follow either way to make nice sanchin stance. Measure one foot apart. And either legs, maybe this time, right leg straight forward, one step forward, and heels out. Don't bring the toe in. If toe in, you're getting narrower to the side. So heels out to 30 degrees. Bend both knees evenly. How much you bend is knee and toe line up and upside down. And the weight is distributed 50-50. It's a sun chin stance. Of course, hip is straightforward. Now, next, cap stance. Go back to attention pose again. This time, keep one leg straight forward. And this time, one and a half. And bend both knees evenly to fall forward, not to the side. Now, weight distribute is 100% in the back leg and 0% in the front. However, for stability reason, you can put your foot on the ground, but never putting the weight. And hip is straight forward. Let's go cat stance. Next is shikodachi hanmi. Shikodachi is a Japanese sumo wrestling stance. Uh, sumo wrestling, only one stance they use to fight. It's called shikodachi. Difficult to translate into English. Shikodachi is Step side to side. How much step side to side is measure if you bring one knee, either leg, toward the other heel. Have to be two fists away. This is just about right. Otherwise, two shoulder width. But when you measure, shoulder is difficult. How wide? So this way is more easier, using leg part to measure yourself. And heels, 30 degrees out, bend both knees evenly. Weight is also even. Now, hanmi means body is 45 degrees against opponent. Either way. If this call, I'm facing opponent is here, facing left, we call left hanmi. If facing to right, or body going to fight, for our right, then we call right migi hanmi. Hanmi means all time body is 45 degrees. Now, hojo undo, nunchaku hojo undo, group one and group two. Group one, most of 
techniques are attacking techniques, except last one. And uh, group two is most of the time catching. Show you group one and some bunkai analyzing the movement and go to group two. This is how to do yoi. Bring nunchaku, pick up both hands, but don't look at weapons. And when you open it, step to left. And the first, sanchin stance. Sanchin stance, I explained to you earlier. Number one is side to side. The other hand, don't leave down. Bring to chest, it's called hikite. And side to side. Five swing. When you practice it yourself, 10 or 20 for each hand is a proper amount. Now go to switch hand and go to this way. Now when you strike, don't go this way. I'm giving bad example when you practice. Not this way. This way, this hand is dead. So all the time, every time you swing comes, this elbow and come down. Number two, this is the most difficult. We call angle strike, naname buri. Start with top and the down. So actually hitting Opponent temple and going to jaw and going back and big swing and this time angle hitting jaw to the temple and coming down make big circle. This is a one set. When you make X, X is the same level as yours, make X right here. This is a bad example. Hit here perfectly. But second, when you're coming back, instead of going this, going this way. This is a bad example. If you're going to be good in nunchaku, come back same route as possible you hit. Now, the other hand. So top, angle here. Come back, same route, make big circle. Down. That's number two. Number three is a figure eight. But figure eight is not there. Again, make X just in front of your face and come back. The other hand. Many nunchak techniques, angle techniques most effective. Well, of course you can hit the top of the head, but when you miss, do you know where you come back? If opponent is just in front of you, then you come back right here. This is not a very good idea. Even opponent to the side, still more likely hit your own ankle or toe. So techniques, nunchaku we don't have, top of the head. Most of the time, angles. Now, if you have punching bag, try to hit yourself side to side. Every time nunchaku hit anything, it's bounce off, come back to your other hand. That's the reason side to side, which you're going to do again, is all the time 
Po. Reaching Po. Like a sword. When you use swords, not only striking, you cut in motion. Cut in motion. When you go side to side stroke, that kind of motion is required. So even you hit, you might broke your, uh, by bouncing off, you might injure your knuckle. So next side, num uh, uh, number four is side. Instead of going this way, this time, kaeshi, yokobri, coming this way, slow. Going all the way, bouncing off. Go a little bit faster. Switch in. This way. This part is coming back. Make sure use hip and bring it. Hit back, bring it. So avoid being hit, your own hand. Number four, number five, sorry, is going to attack him. Two part. The first one go to hit Danju. And the second one going to Suigetsu. When you hit, Straight up and down. And after you hit, second one go to Sigetsu. Nidanzuki. Stance is, is a forward stance. Itch. Bring all the way back here. Ni. San. Shi. Go. Look. Sitch. This is number five. Number six, use a shikodachi hanmi stance. Shikodachi is a sumo wrestling, and hanmi is body 45 degree, and using konte. If you don't know what is konte, then wind back to beginners and look at again. Konte is a, this part of nunchaku. Use Jinchu. Jinchu is right below your nose. Jinchu. Itch. E. Sum. E. Go. Look. Itch. Itch. Number six. Number seven is we call metsubushi. In English is eye smashing techniques. Eye smashing techniques. Sanchin stance again. Nunchak hold this way. Now we have this technique. That's the reason we don't catch this way. But catching techniques go to uh, group two. Next, hojondo. All the time, this hand is parallel with floor. Now, metsubushi is release top hand, as if you are using dart to throw the target. Well, straight to the eyes, and go straight. Go past your shoulders, and hit straight. Straight. So temporary, this nunchaku go straight. If you pull your this hand too soon before this end reach, this is not a good idea. This is a bad example. Putting down too soon. So try to reach all the way. Try to reach all the way to eyes. Let's call Metsubushi. It's number seven. Number seven. 
And number eight is blocking techniques. Blocking. Somebody attacking, opponent attacking your throat. So using cap stance and the block side to side. Each. Knee. Sun. Three. Go. Look. Switch. Uch. Who. Jump. You notice or not, I'm switching back and forth. As I block, left leg forward, right hand is over, top of left. And I'm switching as I step in. Don't block this way. Boy is coming straight up the throat. Blocking this way is very difficult because they are lined up, line up with bow or however, sword. This is vertical and push side. Make nice big circle. This is the end of Hojondo Ichi, which is one. Now we go to Hojondo two. Hojondo, Nunchaku Hojondo, Group 2. This Hojondo consists of all catching techniques. Again, make Sanchin stance. Every time you start with right leg forward Sanchin stance. Like we did Hojondo number group, group one, number one, this time instead of swinging side to side, every time you do catch. Now when you catch, don't catch behind. Don't catch behind. Or well, you have to have a right hand in the right position. Don't go catch this way and finding out your right end. That's the other feel. And every time you catch, you don't swing to catch. You swing, but you miss it. So for next technique, you're going to, you're going to catch. That's the only reason you catch. Okay? This is the number one. This is the number one. Number two is we call front catch. Maedori. We call maedori because hand to catch is the front of you. That's what we call maedori. Now, when you change, hit jars first. And angle hit. And go to next. Now, same manner to catch what we call ushiro dori. Ushiro dori is back catch. Back catch is hand will be behind instead of front. Behind. Same thing, make sure this is a parallel. Don't catch this way. And very difficult to follow next techniques. All the time, this. Any only different thing is instead of front to catch, the hand is behind. Again, jaw, hit, catch. Don't prepare hand all the time behind to catch. 
when you're doing this technique. Bring the front. When you, when you catch, then bring. Number four is underarm catch. We call waki shitadori, waki shitadori. Now, hikite part, which is the other hand, is instead of here. This time, go front. And hit once, come back. Hit, come back. Hit, come back. Try not to hit your elbows. This is very painful. How to apply is my session is going to come at me, such as knife against knife. This technique is very good. So I have right here, step and hit. You can do many different techniques. Thank you, Brian. Number five is we call kayashidori. This is no actually attacking to be used to your nunchaku usually perform by closing your eyes. So you feel your legs catch up and down. So when you catch up and down, not side to side. Flip over, come up, flip over. That's number five. Number six is we call vertical horizontal catch. So, hit, angle, up, catch by one hand. One hand. This technique was used when you're using two nunchakus, which come up the other tape. Kaeshi heikodori. Last catch is upper catch. Upper catch. Upper catch. We call upper catch because hand is top part of the head. You hit, come up. You don't open be be beginning and catch. Close. Close. Don't catch here and try to find your hand. So you have to have a right location before when you bring it. So you can have a right spot to catch. This is the end of Nunchaku Hoja Undo, group two. Now ready for Nunchaku Kata, which is forms. We have two forms. First, we'd like to show you Kobu Nunchaku. And next is Nunchaku Kata.